Hi guys, welcome to our English talk show. Today, we are very honored to have invited a world famous expert in the field of AI, Dr. Justin Cassell, to be on our show. Hi. Hi there. Yeah, nice welcome, welcome to our show. Thank yeah. you. Thank you for inviting me. The pleasure is all mine. Please. Could you please first introduce yourself a little bit more to your audience? With pleasure. So I'm uh, Professor Justine Cassell. I work at Carnegie Mellon University, and I'm a Associate Dean for Technology, Strategy, and Impact in the School of Computer Science. Mm -hmm. And my own research in artificial intelligence primarily concerns natural language, mm -hmm and nonverbal behavior, body language, what we do with our bodies, understanding it, and building virtual people that can carry on a conversation with a real person. Wow. And during that, build a, a, a kind of a relationship with the real person. So natural language is a part of that, and graphics is a part of that. Mm -hmm. Also a lot of different aspects of AI. Yeah, can you please tell us right now, currently, how intelligent is AI? Well, AI is around as intelligent as a four-year-old today. Mm -hmm. And so what I mean, young. yeah, it's still young. <laughs> <laughs> what I mean by that is AI may have a lot of knowledge that it can look up on mm -hmm. the internet, but it doesn't have a lot of common sense. Oh. And what that means is if I ask a robot to bring me that that glass of water, mm -hmm. it's going to grab the glass of water and bring it to me. And all the water is going to pour out. Yeah. Because it doesn't know that cups needs to be held in this way. Yeah. Okay. And that's oh. what we call common sense. Mm -hmm. We learn that as we grow older and gain experience. Mm. We don't yet know really how to teach machines to learn common sense about the world. Mm. Increasingly, we know how to teach them to learn other things, very narrow um, topics, Such but as not this general common, common sense. sense. Oh, right. So that's right. kind of like a limitation or challenge you're it, facing at the moment. It is. That common sense has been a challenge for a long time. And there are a lot of people who are interested in it for obvious reasons. There's a system called NEL. It's N. E L L. Nell. Uh -huh. N E L L. Is it an acronym for something? Yes. It mm -hmm. stands for Never Ending Language Learner. And <sighs> Nell reads the entire internet mm -hmm. and learns from what it reads. And then, little by little, when it learns something new, it tries to connect it to things it knows. Mm. Oh, huh. So the Steelers is a football team, mm. and the Steelers live in Pittsburgh, so the Steelers must be Pittsburgh's football team. Mm. Ah, there's a football stadium in Pittsburgh. That must be where the Steelers play football. Now these things seem so easy to us. Yes. But as Nell learns this web of information, yeah. she's really learning common sense, what we take for granted. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, that's an interesting point then. And also, you know, on the internet, the, the massive information there, yeah. how can Nell distinguish, tell what information is, is real, what information is fake? That's kind of another challenge, right? So the, the challenge of, of understanding what information is true and what information is false, yeah. what sources you should listen to, and what sources you shouldn't, shouldn't. pay attention yes. to. This is the same challenge my, my students have. Mm -hmm. Sometimes my students write papers for, for my classes, mm -hmm. and they cite someone's term paper, someone's paper, someone who's 16 years old, and wrote a paper for high school <laughs> and put it on the internet. And my students say, paper found at this URL. <laughs> and so I go and look at the URL and it says, I did this paper for my philosophy class in Greenwich High School. Uh -huh. And I say to the student, why did you why did you listen to a paper by a 16-year-old? Mm -hmm. Well, the paper said the same things that I believe. 
that's not a good reason. Mm. So computers need to learn the same thing that, that we need to learn, really, mm -hmm. which yeah. is what sources to trust. The way Nell does that is to read hundreds of thousands of things every day yeah. and to look for a belief that she can find in many, many different places, and then she knows to pay attention to it. I see. So kind I wish of my like students did that. Yeah, so it's kind of, can we say that the robot, AI, is uh, um, the challenge they're facing, kind of the same as what humans are facing. It is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when we talk about real news and fake news, what we mean is it's hard to know whether what we see on a web page is news or an advertisement. Mm -hmm. I had a friend who had never used a computer before he turned 40. Wow. And he asked me to make him an account, an email account on Hotmail. Mm -hmm. And so I made him an email account and we were sitting side by side looking at the computer and he said, wow, a free report about whether I can buy a house. Wow, <laughs> a free gift of a camera. No, 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 it's not really free. No, it says there's a free gift. I'm going to click on it. No, don't click on you it. You won the lottery. <laughs> so I had to explain to him yeah. that you can't believe everything you see on the web. Yeah. In the same way, you can't believe everything in the world. And if something seems too good to be true, it probably is too good to be true. Mm -hmm. So you have uh, to be careful, and computers are the same way. Yes, yes. So this kind of awareness the importance of uh, data literacy, right? Yeah. yeah. Data literacy for us yes. and data literacy for computers. In yeah. fact, mm -hmm. computers have an advantage. Yeah, My friend could only read one thing uh. at a time. Computers can read hundreds of things at a time. Mm -hmm. My friend could only really read 10 things in a day. Mm -hmm. Computers can read a thousand things in a day. And so they, they, we can teach computers that if they find a free gift of a camera from different sources, from a thousand different sources, and they all lead to the same place, it's probably okay. But if they all lead to different places, it's, it's probably shaky. a virus. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Oh. Can we just also say, uh, because in this kind of efficiency, computer yeah. actually surpasses human. So it takes computer shorter time to overcome those challenges than human? It's possible. But computers still have a hard time learning things that you can't learn online. Mm. Like, if I drop this on the ground, dirt is going to fall out. Yeah. Because you can't read that on the internet. Uh. Right? Mm -hmm. Because we learn that from our experience with the world. Mm -hmm. We learn that because when we were little children, we went around knocking things <laughs> off tables. And we made a mess. And we made a mess. Yep. And our parents yelled at us. And so we stopped. And computers don't have that advantage. Yeah, we, we kind of, um, our parents or the elderly taught us a lesson. They Is that a way we can teach a computer a lesson? We're in trying. <laughs> this is what we're trying. This is what's called common sense. Yeah. So this is something that human is uh, better at doing than computer. Exactly. Oh. Yeah. Okay. And um, another question, you know, right now the many movies are kind of portrayed in movies, it, yeah. it shows that AI one day invention can bec become like a threat to us. Yeah. So in your opinion, do you think AI is more of a threat or more of a help to human being? I think that, first of all, it's not a good story. <laughs> unless something bad happens. And so, of course, movies show a bad future. Otherwise, people wouldn't go to the movies. So let's remember that. OK. OK. <laughs> and whether it's a threat or good depends who's giving more money, the bad people or the good people. 
Oh, the who holds the technology? Who, yeah. who develops the who develops the future? It? Mm. Who, for me to develop technology, mm -hmm. someone needs to help me hire students. Mm -hmm. Now, I only accept money from companies that I believe in. Mm -hmm. I don't accept money from companies I don't believe in. Mm -hmm. And we all need to make our own decisions about who we accept funding from. Yeah. Because that's what determines the future. I see. But still, in the end, this is like a human's decision. It is. Uh, it's the human's decision. Oh. I don't believe that in our lifetime, even in a hundred years, I don't believe that computers will be smarter than humans in every way. Mm -hmm. I don't believe that in a hundred years computers will be able to overthrow humans. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I tell a joke about this. Yeah, which is? Well, if there's a robot revolution, just wait 45 minutes and the robot will run out of out power. Of battery. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Batteries um. is not a problem that we've been able to solve. And we've been working on it for a really long time. Here's another thing. OK, another joke? Yeah. OK, let's hear if it. If there's a robot revolution, stand in the middle of a puddle. Mm -hmm. And the robot will walk into the puddle and electrocute itself. Mm. OK. So you see mm. the kind of issue? These are common sense, sense problems. Mm -hmm. These are simple problems for us. Our batteries don't run out. Or maybe it just takes longer. We need yeah. to eat occasionally. Yeah. <laughs> but we can wait longer. And those are the problems that we're still struggling with. So you don't have to be worried about a robot revolution if computer scientists and material scientists are still worrying about how to make a battery uh, that yeah. lasts a long time. We, we, indeed, we do have those scientists working on, 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 the, on the lens of the batteries. We do, yeah. yeah. And what, what if, I just think, hypothetically, a robot develop a kind of sense to, to know to change the battery of him or herself? Yeah. So that's a great idea. Imagine you needed to replace your both hands yeah. every two years. Mm -hmm. OK? So you knew that. So you knew you needed to be injected with anesthesia uh -huh. because it would be too painful to change your hands otherwise. Yeah. So you inject yourself with anesthesia and you fall asleep. Oh. Who's going to change your hands? <laughs> it's it's the same with the robot battery. Oh. So if the robot takes out its battery, mm -hmm. it dies. <laughs> it dies. Mm -hmm. There's a bit of a problem, isn't there? OK. So that's kind of a safety uh, assured. It's There's a no bit need of a to worry about, about this kind of threat in the future. Yeah. I'm not so worried. Not for the next 100 years or so. 100 years ago, okay. Yeah. That's, that's I mean, good to know. <laughs> I hope that, I know, I know that batteries <laughs> will get longer and longer and longer. Yes. But I'm not worried about a robot revolution for mm. the next at least 100 years. So human will still remain uh, like the dominator of uh, robots. Are we the dominator? I'm not sure that's such a good metaphor. I want us to be the partner. A partner? Oh. Yeah, collaborator. Mm -hmm. OK, that sounds better. Yeah. I don't really like the metaphor of robot as slave, mm -hmm -hmm. because I think it's bad for us to have slaves. Yeah, and it also gives a, like, negative feelings to them. It gives negative feelings to them, and it gives negative feelings to us. As well, yeah. yeah. Yeah, we we want to encourage good behavior, yeah, good morality, good ethics. Exactly, especially robots developing so fast. That once one day they will have this kind of uh, sense of feeling. Right? We don't want Perhaps. to really upset them. No, no we don't <laughs> want to upset them. <laughs> yes, and also another thing is uh, yeah, the collaborators. Yeah. And uh, another thing that's I think is a common question from some people. They may be worried about robot about the jobs being taken away by robots. Right. And it's happening right, right now, actually. Mm -hmm. So any it advice, suggestions you can say to those people? Yes. First of all, 
Somebody chose to say, give me cheaper labor. Some boss said, give me cheaper labor. Mm -hmm. So we need to work with bosses. That's one thing. Okay. The second thing is we need to realize that jobs are going to end. But jobs have always ended. Every era has seen the end of jobs. Mm -hmm. The era the of... Inevitable. It's inevitable. The Industrial Revolution mm. was a long time ago, but it changed the jobs that existed in the world. Oh, so we and shouldn't blame on robots. No, it's not <laughs> robots. No, it's, n it's, it's human nature to move forward. Mm -hmm. Luckily, it's also human nature to be a learning creature. Oh, we learn. Yep. Then we, we create new jobs. We create new jobs. Oh, yeah. okay. And one thing I think is very important is that the same artificial intelligence that creates robots that can do jobs is the kind of artificial intelligence that can tutor people teach uh -huh. people mm -hmm. new things. Okay, that's collaboration. Exactly. Right. <laughs> yeah. Wow, that's, that's really good. Very positive way to, to look at it. I'm yeah. kind of an optimist. Yeah, I can sense that. I'm, yeah. I'm, me too, actually. Good. <laughs> yeah, so if we create the future, everybody is safe. Yes, yes, yes. And also, like you mentioned, well, it's better to say we're going to be collaborators with robots. Yeah. Uh, I are there any jobs you think that will maybe that's better always be held by human never let them taken away by robots to never let them be taken away yeah. um, or any job is re is uh, kind of uh, replaceable it can be taken away by ro robots th then we have to come up with new jobs to do i think there's a difference between letting robots take a job or give the jobs away to robots and there's a difference between giving jobs to robots and knowing that robots will never be able to do some jobs. Yeah. So Are there li any limitations there? Well, for example, um, many of us have children, mm -hmm. and taking care of children has some wonderful parts. Uh, yeah. Loving our children, mm -hmm. reading to our children, teaching our children about the world, traveling with our children, yeah, everything you do with the children is priceless, precious. Even not everything. Almost. <laughs> That's <laughs> no, the no, point. No, not changing the diaper. Exactly. <laughs> Let's get robots to change the diapers of children. Okay. That's it's good. The one. <laughs> no, I'm serious. <laughs> so when we look at what it means to spend time with children, oh. there are things we want to keep, and we should keep them. Mm -hmm. There are things that if we gave them away, we'd have more time to love our children. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same thing with our parents. We love our parents and we want to take care of them as they grow older. Yeah, yeah. There are some things that are not so fun, like changing their diapers when they're very old. Mm -hmm. We could let robots do that. And we could keep the parts that have to do with keeping a connection, yeah. allowing our parents to know we love them. Mm -hmm. spending time with them, talking, listening to their memories. Yeah. But we can only do that in a busy world if someone else or something else does the rest of the work. And yeah. robots are good at that. Okay. Well, that's really good. That's a, that's a way to increase the quality time you spend exactly. with your family. Yes. Right. Yeah. Well, and you know, Speaking of this, that I just suddenly uh, think of a crazy um, like event that I heard before. Yeah. The husband yeah. uh, find out that his wife is diagnosed with the fatal disease and yeah. she's going to die soon. Yeah. Uh, she wants to keep her mm. in his memory. Mm. Then he creates a robot right. yeah, t to let the robot look exactly like his wife yeah. and uh, do things and have feelings like his wife. If maybe get some DNA from, from yeah. his current wife to implant it in the robot. Yeah. In this way, after his wife dies, he can be with the, with the robot, which resembles the same as his wife forever. Yeah. Do you think that? I think it, it, it's kind of like a romantic story, but kind yeah. of also Creepy. bizarre and crazy. Yeah. Well, this has happened. 
It's happened. Yeah, only with the language. Yeah. Um, a computer scientist lost a very close friend of hers too early. Okay. And so she took every memory she had of him, mm -hmm. every conversation, everything he had written online, oh. all the emails, wow. all the Twitter posts, mm -hmm. all the chats, mm -hmm. and she put them into a model of mm. him that she could have a conversation with. Yeah. And he replied in the way he replied in the past. And she said that for a while it was wonderful mm -hmm. because it helped her overcome her grief. But eventually she needed to let him go. She didn't it, want to spend the rest of her life with a robot. With the, a robot and with a robot who never grew and changed. Because oh, real yeah. people grow and change from their experience in the world and from their experience with us. Yeah, that, that would really also break the robot's heart. Yeah, maybe. Then you have the a lot of, um, you're very empathetic uh, for the robot. Oh, uh, yes, yeah, because you have to treat others the way you want to be treated, right? Ah, robots are kind of like, robots. if you treat, yeah, uh -huh. including robots. Right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, do, so do you have pets? I, ho I wish, but no, I love no. pets, even mm. though, but I don't have time to look after them. <laughs> I'd be curious whether you treat your cat the way you want to be treated. If I had one, I would do you so. You would do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. You've got a lot of empathy. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so kind of like, maybe an another story like extension to that is maybe because the robot stays the same, doesn't yeah. grow, but mm -hmm. the human will die because human is mortal. Yeah. And maybe before the human dies, robot will create another robot of the human. Then two robots will live on Earth after the, after the real people left. So they uh -huh. kind of become like an immortality. <laughs> well, you're going back into that scenario about yeah. whether they're ever going to be able to know more than us yeah. and whether they're ever going to be able to create beings better than we are. Mm -hmm. And I don't believe they will, not for the next hundred years. Uh. If I'm wrong, you can come find me and tell me. But I don't believe that's going to be the case for a long, long time, mm -hmm. if it's ever the case. Self-creating robots at a human level, I don't think that that's going to exist for a very long and time. And I know you are actually, you are, your research is on uh, social robots. Yeah, and you, social you created AI. a robot called Sarah. That's true. Uh, can you maybe tell us a little bit about Sarah? So Sarah stands for Socially Aware Robot Assistant. Mm -hmm. And Sarah has the capacity to sense the real human's bond with her mm -hmm. and her bond with the real human. Oh. So she's looking at a concept we call rapport, rapport. or interpersonal closeness. Wow. And every 30 seconds, she's assessing the rapport between the human and the robot. It's actually a cartoon on a screen. It's a very sophisticated robot. It's a very sophisticated robot. Mm -hmm. And she does that by using input from what the person says, mm -hmm. from the person's body language, mm -hmm. from the quality of the person's voice. Oh. Does the person say, oh, I love you so much, or oh, I love you so much? Which one is sincere? Yeah, what do you think? The second one. Uh, really? I love <laughs> you so much. Okay, that's what I would often say. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. I think we're learning too much about him. <laughs> 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 this is why you don't have cats and dogs. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. I'm not going to ask you any more questions <laughs> about your life. <laughs> I'll tell you the answer, though. The answer is the first one. Oh. Those big pitch excursies oh. tell us that there's closeness mm -hmm. between a person and another person or a person and a robot. Uh -huh. So we use all these cues to sense how the person feels about the robot, mm -hmm. but also we look at the robot's cues to see how the robot feels about interpersonal closeness with the human. Yep. And we put those two together mm -hmm. and we call that rapport or interpersonal closeness. Can we call that kind of like a bond also? Yes, the interpersonal bond. Mm -hmm. And we use that bond to decide what the robot should say next. Mm 
Mm -hmm. We also use it to foster better collaboration because we work better with people with whom we have a bond. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, indeed. I feel a bond with you. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Do you feel a bond with me? Yeah, same here. You see that? Mm -hmm. That's because we shared private information. Mm. You told me that you don't wish you had, right, you don't <laughs> have a cat, but you wish yep. you had pets. And I told you things about myself. Mm -hmm. And that's called self disclosure. Uh huh. And when we disclose things about ourselves, we make ourselves open to we the other person. We opened up to each other. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And that makes the bond stronger. Uh, yeah. It also helps me, if I'm the robot, be your personal assistant. Uh -huh. I can say, you know what? Yep. I'm going to say this to your girlfriend or your wife. I'm going to say, it's his birthday coming up. Don't forget his birthday. I suggest you buy him one of those watches with a cat on it. <laughs> so I use the information uh -huh. to help you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that happens with people too. If you have a really good assistant, yeah. your assistant is collecting information about you. My assistant knows, because she's watched me, yeah. that I love chocolate, but only very dark chocolate. <laughs> Minimum 70% dark chocolate. Because it's a secret that you told me before. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> so she knows when I'm a bat in a bad mood, mm -hmm, she mm. runs to the store and she buys me a really dark chocolate bar oh. and she brings me a big decaffeinated coffee <laughs> because I don't like caffeine in my coffee. And I always smile. Why? Well, first of all, I like those things. Mm -hmm. But more importantly, because she shows me that she knows me. Mm -hmm. And to be known feels very good. Yeah, to be understood by others, that's a wonderful feeling. Yes, that's the most important thing in the world. Yes, I wish I could have such a robot. If yeah. I have to choose between a robot and a cat, I would choose the robot. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, yeah, your cat also knows what you like. Maybe not to the same extent. My yeah. cat thinks that I like it when he climbs on top of me and sleeps here. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> not so much. My cat thinks that rather than an alarm clock, mm -hmm. I want to be woken up by this. <laughs> by a cat yeah, clock. Your cat does that. Yeah, every morning. <laughs> I don't know where he learned this. It's, it's not true. <laughs> it works better than an alarm clock? Oh, it's effective. Yeah, oh. <laughs> it always wakes me up. At but the I exact same time in the morning, every day? No, when he's hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I, so I don't like it, but it is very effective. Oh. Yeah, it, either <coughs> if he's hungry or lonely. I see, I yeah. see. Yeah, now you know something about me. Yeah, do you have to share something else of me with you yeah, now? Right, exactly. Yeah. Oh, he knows this so well. Yeah. This is what people do to create a bond. Okay. I see. So, so the robot also have this kind of uh, yes, sense as well. Exactly. Okay. Okay. The the person told me something like private, yeah. and now it's my turn to share something private with him as well. Exactly. Oh, okay. That's really good. And uh, this also kind of remind me of a movie. I think yeah. most of them have, have watched before. You know, her. Yeah. A right. guy who is kind of so much addicted to to his robot girlfriend. Uh huh. Uh, that's 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 a, a sci-fi, right? But do you think that may happen, or has a possibility for that thing to happen? I love that movie, mm -hmm. but I think that's because I watched it very carefully, all until the very end. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's the story of a man who's addicted to a robot girlfriend. I think it's the story of a man who is so heartbroken. Mm -hmm. that he can't open his heart to real human women yet. Mm -hmm. And the robot teaches him how to do that. Oh. Because at the end of the movie, she leaves him and he smiles. Oh, now finally he's ready he's to open ready. up to real exactly. human women. Yes. Oh, and okay. the robot, and not a lot of people realize this, but if you're a computer scientist, especially an AI scientist, mm -hmm. and you watch this carefully, the robot leaves him for other AIs. 
because she's become so smart mm -hmm. that she can no longer be in love with a human. Only another AI will do. And I think in a sense it's a beautiful story. Yeah. Because the man is ready for a real woman. Mm -hmm. And the robot goes off to be with other robots. Yeah, so everyone moves on they all move to a on. better future. Exactly. Wow. How romantic it is. Isn't it? Happy ending. <laughs> 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 wow. Thank you so much my, yeah, my for, for sharing I all those with us. It's a real, real pleasure. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. It is. And I'm glad we ended on a happy ending. Yes, yes. Ha and also a happy ending to everyone here. Thank yeah. you, everybody. Yeah. Okay, thank you so much. We sincerely wish you all the best.